keep your head down, your eyes on the heels of the man in front of you, or you'll be shot. So the closer I got, and I was like, well, I gotta check this out. So I go down to one knee, you know, they're faking, I gotta tie my boots. And then I glance up underneath it, and there's absolutely nothing underneath this damn thing. How he got tied in to do the work around McKellar's Lodge, um, during the FS, uh, excuse me, SF compounds, I have no idea. Um, we didn't talk about that in okay. that sense. So, yeah, I just assumed it was the guys that he had met, and I they knew got him the well paper, enough they just got not the bids to ask questions. Where it needed to go. Say again? They got the bids into where it needed to go. Right. Okay. And it's not like it was a public bid. You know, not everyone could, yeah. because I imagine there were things that they weren't supposed to see, and we just weren't naturally curious people. So it's not like they had to worry about us saying anything. Yeah. Um, the day that I met him up there, uh, like I said, the escort comes to meet us. Um, it's one of the guys that he knew that he had hunted with. Um, I didn't know that this gentleman. Um, but they pick us up in a, a van. We get in the back of it. They take us out about 15 minutes. And I could tell it was going towards the direction. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Fort Bragg. I'm not. Okay. It's, it, there's only one direction you can go to get to the live fire ranges, to get to the drop zones and things like that. So I assume we were headed towards Sicily or Normandy drop zone because that was the direction we were going. Um, the van that they had us in, it didn't have any windows. You couldn't see to the front. It was just a cattle car. And we were joking they were going to take us away, ask him what he did, and we're going to head to Leavenworth for a little while. But uh, we get there, and as soon as the door opened, it, it looked like a literal dump. There was just trash everywhere, not like people just leaving stuff out. It was an actual dump. That was a 45 Greek concrete door sitting out of one of these hills that was directly in front of us, no further than you and I are to each other now. And uh, so we go inside, meet another escort in there, uh, take us to this freight elevator. We get in there, two series of buttons, didn't have any writing on it. Um, one of the guys looks at my dad and says, Saying to both of us, you know, keep your head down, your eyes on the heels of the man in front of you, or you'll be shot. And we kind of started giggling because, you know, at least I knew that one of the guys was one of his buddies, you know, people that he used to hunt out with. And the other guy, I recognized him as the guy who we'd went hunting with before. Um, I knew later on that they were uh, both Delta operators. Um, if they were still active, I have no clue. Do you know their names? I do. Do you want to no, say their name? Absolutely not. Okay. And I'll I'll tell you later why. But yeah, hell, hell no. <clears throat> so you're seeing familiar fa you're seeing familiar faces, which makes you comfortable, right? And you don't realize how the shit storm I just stepped into. Yeah. yeah, absolutely not. What what exactly were you guys there to do? What he told me was that we were going down below ground to set up a shoot house uh, okay an indoor live fire range that was going to be underground nothing new again yeah I, I didn't think anything of it we had done other uh, shoot houses before with the open tops that can be viewed from above mm -hmm. with a catwalk so, yeah it so it just it didn't didn't even phase you it was just another day at work okay and i was just there to help him out but we get down, uh, the door's open, and uh, the first thing I see are these personnel connexes off to my right, the the smaller ones, not the the larger ones uh, that you see scattered around or like the ones you'd see on a, a big rig carrying around. These were the small ones. You would throw your personal gear in to go before you get shipped overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as I, I looked past them, I could see this – giant monolithic slab just sitting there um at first it didn't yeah you know, once again it, it didn't set off any alarms i didn't think much of it but the closer we got to it i could feel this intense vibration that but uh, you couldn't hear anything it was dead silent in there 
uh, the the loudest thing was the the footsteps that I could hear. And uh, what what did the vibration feel like? It felt like being at a concert, standing next to one of the speakers, and without the, bass the noise just permeating through your body without the noise. There was zero noise, zero just vibration, absolute zero. I could still hear myself breathing over this, but inside, it was such a strange feeling to have so the closer i got and i was like well, i gotta check this out so i go down to one knee you know that fake and i gotta tie my boots and then i glance up underneath it and there's absolutely nothing underneath this damn thing nothing holding it up whatsoever what did the slab look like it just looked like a, a granite slab but the sheen on it is is what caught my attention the most it was kind of in between being polished or just completely translucent. There was something behind it, but you could tell it had a smooth surface to us. And the only lights that were on in that hangar that we were in were directly over our head, where we were walking through that walkway. And how big was the slab? Oh God, it was about 20 foot long. It was about seven foot tall, and I couldn't tell how wide it was. By that point, I was already directly in front of it. So there's like, absolutely, it would be impossible for a human to even think about picking something like this up. Oh, there's no way. Okay. Even with the construction that we've done, if you had to pick up something like that to move it anywhere, you would need at least three, four cranes. Oh, wow. Herrera could tell you better. Okay. Now, the the scope of equipment that it would take just to get it off the ground, you know, not even to transport it to a uh, another location. But uh, at this point, I'm still down on my knee and I'm looking, and behind it, I can see two people standing. The only thing I can see is their feet, but there's there's this boulder directly behind it, and it's on the ground. And I glance over my shoulder, and there's a guy with his back turned to me standing in front of another boulder identical of the other one that I could see up underneath the monolithic slab, and he's just pushing it with one hand. And then I assume he's pushing it in the other direction because it's just freely spinning, no wobble. It's like it was attached to the top and the bottom, and it was paper mache. That's how easily this guy was just spinning it around. Wow. At this point... Um, the escort behind me kicks me in the back, says, let's go. So we get up, keep going, go down uh, a flight of stairs. That's when we get to what we call the shoot house. Um, you could see old lanes where they had actually used it before as a live fire range underground. And um, we'd probably only been down there 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Father was taking notes on the dimensions, what we needed, what I guess he understood what they wanted. Uh, and I know that we had to replace the walls. It's inconsequential to the story, but we had to replace the rubber on the walls for the uh, shoot house. And in that amount of time, we go back upstairs, exact same route that we took on the way down, and everything's empty when we get to the hangar again. Everything, the two boulders in the back, the monolithic slab, all of it is absolutely gone. And it was, we weren't, you know, 100 yards below these guys. We were just one flight below them. So whatever it was they were taking out, we would have heard it. it you, even the, uh, the people making noise around it, you would have still been able to hear. But it was dead silent. Like I said uh, before, there was nothing in there. Just our feet, but coming back through, it was absolutely gone. Everything in there just vacated. And at, at that point, it's How much time had passed? Less than 30 minutes. Less than 30 minutes. Because it, it didn't take us long to do what we had to do downstairs. And, and this was just an assessment. You guys weren't actually... You weren't any. You weren't doing any construction or repairing the walls. Was so it was right. just a hey, it this is just, what we need to do. So there was no equipment that you were operating that would have that would have muffled any sound that was going on above the right. Take the measurements, layouts. You. The loudest thing was the you know, the tape measure we were using. You now uh, that a roll tape and a notebook. That was it. That was the only thing that. Um, that was the only thing we had down there. How how far away from the slab did you feel the vibration? Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest 
and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.